Back in the basement again today to talk about these Hansu deep dish cast iron plates, which I got the other day. Threw a picture up on Instagram, got a lot of questions about them. I figured I'd just give you my first impressions as it's going to be a little while before I can do a full on review. You're probably familiar with Hansu because I've done a dedicated review on their powerlifting plates before. They've actually come out with a newer version of that as well, which they sent me several plates of. So I'll be doing an updated video review on that. But when it was all said and done, I received 26 new plates from them all of which were shipped via UPS ground. Now, typically, that's a very terrifying statement to make because anytime you get something heavy in general these days, whether it be freight or ground, there's a high risk of it coming damaged, messing, messed up, whatever you wanna say. These came ground, all in perfect condition. They were double boxed, very happy about it. The only thing that wasn't good about that situation was my UPS driver was pissed to have to unload 26 individual boxes of weight plates, but He's probably gonna get more jacked because of it, so you're welcome, UPS guy. So first impressions of these, right out of the box, again, because there was no damage to them, that's a great thing. But you can still order ugly plates that come in not damaged and they still don't look good and your first impressions could be bad. Kind of like the Bells of Steel's plates I recently reviewed where they were just ugly. Nice plates, but ugly. These plates, I dig them. I think they're super aesthetic. So visually, first impressions on this were great. Now, obviously they have that vintage deep dish design that's become really popular, especially due to the rogue deep dish plates that are out there. This is a hammer tone gray. It's really dark. I like this color. Uh, it also has the silver lettering on the tops and the sides and the bottom. I think it really pops and it looks really good. And if you don't have a very well lit gym like I have, these might even almost appear black in some pictures or instances but that shouldn't be the case for you because I have a video on gym lighting that you probably have watched already. Now, again, the deep dish design, pretty standard. You have the center hub, which protrudes. You have these spokes that protrude out of it all in line with the hub that kind of run almost flush to the lip, which is a deeper lip, hence the term deep dish plates. Overall, things look very good. This deep dish allows you to get the plates on off easily. So whether it's on the weight tree, whether it's on a bar right here, and it should be facing in, but it's not for the purpose of this video. These things are super easy to handle and you'll never have an instance of where these are going to slip out of your hands and potentially take out some of your toes. So overall pleased with this. The back of these is just the same basic design, kind of this textured hammer tone, dark gray finish, but again, very aesthetic in that regard. Now, speaking of this, these are cast iron plates, so they're not machined, so you're not gonna have some of the finer edges or smoothness, but truth be told, I don't have any issues across any of the plates that they have sent me, and in my case, I have 14 total of these deep dish plates, making up 1045s, 235s, should have had more 35s, and a pair of 25s as well but all the plates are super nice in terms of finish. There's no jagged edges, especially when you take a look at the center hole, there's no spurs poking through that could potentially scratch up your bar, which is the case a lot of times for cheaper cast iron. These things showed up in fantastic shape. I will say it's not perfect. There are some issues where you see some kind of rough patches on some of the metal itself, or maybe even some smooth patches in the finish where it looks like something was smudged as part of the casting process. But again, overall for cast iron plates, these things came out phenomenally well. And again, they look really good as well. Speaking of looking as good, one of the great things about these for my first impressions is not only the 45 pound plates, which look very similar to the Rogue plates, but when you take a look at the 35s or 25s in this instance, they carry the same design on, which is not the case for the Rogue version. The 35s and 25s are not this deep dish spoked design. They look a little bit different, which I know rubs some people the wrong way. So it's nice to see them carry this out through the 35s and 25s. Another similarity, however, that these have with the Rogue plates is that they don't offer change plates currently. Now I do believe it's in their roadmap to do so, but as of right now, you can only order 45s, 35s, or 25s. They also don't have any 100s like the Rogue variant does. Now, because this is an actual cast iron plate, you are gonna not only lose some of the nicer finishes and edging that maybe a machine plate would, you're also gonna lose some of the tolerances potentially. I say that because even though these are cast iron, which typically have a wide tolerance, which is one of the reasons I usually avoid cast iron plates, these ones from what I weighed, I weighed all 10 45s, the average weight across those 10 was 44.99 pounds. Out of that, only two were underweight, one of which the lowest one being 44.35, the highest one being 45.25. So if you take out that kind of low outlier, that 44.35, the average weight jumps up to 45.09, which in my opinion is a little bit better to have these a little bit heavier than they are on the lighter side, but they're still all extremely accurate. 
Now you won't find an actual actually rating listed on the Hansu site, but speaking with them, they said they should be within plus or minus 2%, which is typically what you'd find on a machine plate anyway. Sometimes you get a little bit better like plus or minus one or plus two minus zero. But I think plus or minus two for a cast iron is extremely accurate. And in my case, all of my plates are almost right on the dot, which is great. But I would be remiss if I didn't say what I get is not always what you end up getting. One of the downfalls of going with any company that imports stuff is you see some inconsistencies across batches. But if they're able to maintain this plus or minus 2% on this cast iron with this aesthetic, I think they'll probably be some pretty popular plates. Now, one of the areas with the machining that's probably not as good as what you'll find out there is the center hole tolerance. They don't list what the tolerance is on here. They might say like 50 millimeters or so. This is a little bit more loose than my other machined plates I've dealt with. I can tell because when you slide the plate on and off, you're not finding residue from whatever the actual finishes of the plate on the barbell. So in this case, it's a little bit looser. I think the benefit here is the plate's a little bit wider, so it has more coverage on it. So you're probably not gonna notice as much of that wobble, especially as you start to load plates up. But that brings up a great point and probably the most prevalent question I've gotten on these so far, how wide or how deep are these when compared to the Rogue version? So one of the things that really holds people back from the Rogue ones, myself included, was the deep dishes were just a little too deep, which is not a problem I oftentimes have, but the Rogue Deep Dish averaged about two inches, 1.97 across. These Hansu plates are 1.56, so almost a full half inch less depth. Now that really starts to play a role when you start adding plates on. So if you have two plates on a side, that's an inch difference. Four plates is gonna be two inches. Six plates or 585 is gonna be three inches less of real estate that it takes up, which you might be thinking, I'm not gonna be lifting 585 on any lift but you also have to consider from the standpoint of storing these in your gym, whether you have rack storage, whether you have a, the most expensive weight tree in the world like I do, you could potentially not be able to store as many weights, which means you might not be to outfit your complete gym. I have a ton of weights, but I like to keep more than I can lift anyways, because I like to superset a lot of stuff in, or if I ever find a friend that wants to train with me, which might never happen at my age right now, it's nice to have multiple weights so multiple people can work out or I can squat and deadlift at the same time and not worry about changing plates back and forth. So that's one of the downsides here though at least is the rogue ones take up more, these ones take up less and I think that's a big win because you still get that same functionality of having these deep dish plates and designs without actually having to give up that bar real estate. Uh, other than that, Another thing I wanna talk about is the actual cost and shipping of these. I mentioned already the shipping, they came in great shape, but in the United States and Canada, Hansu actually offers free shipping, which is huge, especially when you're dealing with things that are really heavy. And in the United States, you don't have to pay tax, which means the given price on the website is what you pay. And the given price for these for a pair on the website is $206 Canadian. And I say that because I couldn't figure out a way to change it into US dollars. So 206 Canadian, which probably isn't gonna matter if you don't live in Canada, which equals out to just about $180 US or $1.88 per pound, which seems kind of high to me at first glance given it's a cast iron plate, but given some of the things I've already talked about with the nice finish quality on it, the tolerance on it as far as the weight accuracy and whatnot, and the fact that it has free shipping and no tax, I think that's a big win because if I put a pair of Rogue 45 pound deep dish plates in, which are machined and have an e-coat finish, and I think overall are probably nicer plates minus the width, those things retail for 155, but after shipping and tax, it's up to 220. So these are 40 pounds different uh, per pair. It's a lot of peas out there. Don't like a lot of peas in my life. Um, so I think these are good. So again, first impressions of these are very solid. Like I said, I like the design. I like the look, the accuracy you can't really argue with. I like the fact that the 35s and 25s have that same design that carries through. What I don't like about these, again, is the center hole tolerance isn't as good as some of the other plates that I'm used to. Uh, and also the fact that you can't really get changed plates with these because they're only offered in 25, 35s, and 45s at the time being. So if you wanna complete a set, you're probably gonna have to pick up some like barbell standard, great hammer tone plates to match or some other plates of your choosing. But at the end of the day, first impressions, these are really solid. I think if you're interested in something like this, you know, you wanna get a good plate, a deep dish design, but not take up a ton of real estate and not kind of pay out the nose for something, especially with shipping, depending on where you're located and depending on how much weight you actually need. These Hansu deep dish calibrated plates are probably worth, worth taking a look at. So I'll link them in the description box below. If I didn't answer any of your questions, make sure you ask them in the comment section and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And in the meantime, as always, 
Thanks for watching and stay big.